Hello and welcome back to the Gentle Dog Trainers channel. I'm your host, Olivia De Santos, and today is going to be a bit of a different video. Um, as you can see, probably by the title and the thumbnail, um, one of the dogs, one of the models for the Gentle Dogs Trainers channel uh, passed away. Um, at the time of recording this video, it has been about six weeks. Um, but when I wrote the video, I wrote the video four days after Blue died. And we will get around to why I wrote the video so soon and why this was quite an outlet for me. Um, but I wanted to create a video and an article um, just talking through my process of how I am grieving for my dog and how much she meant to me and how painful it is to lose a dog, um, how painful it is to lose any prized loving member of your family at the end of the day. Um, so this is going to be a bit of a somber topic and, and my deepest condolences if you are also going through this, um, if you have lost your dog, if you've lost a dog in the past or if you've lost them recently, it's a really painful, horrible thing and um, I hope that you're taking care of yourself. So in this video I want to go through um, seven chaotic tips um, that have been helping me to get through my grief and to understand my grief and to process my grief for my dog and kind of understand my relationship with her um, and I hope that it's helpful for you too. Before I dive into the tips though I do want to mention that I have some resources in the description box down below that helped me write this video and also helped me through the initial stages of grief like to understand what was happening um, and to contextualize what I was feeling um, and let me know what was normal and what wasn't. Um, so do check out the links in the description box because I do think that they're going to be very helpful. So without further ado, let's start with number one. So number one is don't disenfranchise your own sadness. Um, when Blue died, uh, even though we were expecting that she would die relatively soon, I'm sure you saw in the video about how to care for an elderly dog and how to care for an anxious dog. Um, she was breathing very heavily. Um, she was already quite unwell, but she was still with it, you know? She was still quite chirpy, uh, quite needy, <laughs> um, quite cuddly, all of those things. Like She was still with it. And um, so even though we were expecting that, you know, she might not live out the year, um, it was still very shocking and heartbreaking when it actually happened. Like the initial hit, the initial news and the initial reaction was very strong, um, which was a surprise to me considering that I wasn't, considering that I thought I had prepared, right? I thought I had prepared myself properly for this moment, given that we could already probably see that it was coming. Um, but no, I was destroyed. And one of the things I had to battle with the most was like quieting that voice in your head that says that, you know, you shouldn't be as sad as you are, um, because that's nonsense. Um, and my second tip or note or piece of advice is to know that not everyone is going to understand it. So you shouldn't disenfranchise your own sadness, tip number one, because there are lots of people who are going to do that for you. There are lots of people who don't understand what it's like to lose a dog, um, particularly one that has been in a, such a huge part of your life. Um, Blue was 14 um, and I am 27. So as you can imagine, she's been in my life for half of my life, right? Um, so it was a huge loss. 
a huge, huge loss. I've, I've, she's been in my life since she was this small and I could carry her. I have photos like that, right? Um, so, th and not everyone will understand what it's like to lose a pet that you are that close to and that, you know, connected to and loved that much. Um, so be somewhat selective about who you tell. I would definitely tell other dog people because um, they're more likely to understand what you're going through. But tip number three is that support can come from really unlikely places. So um, there are some people that I told initially about the loss of my dog um, and I didn't actually get the support, the reaction that I thought I was going to get from them. And oddly enough, it was people who are completely on the peripheries of my life to a degree, or people that I didn't expect because they might not have been dog people, that were really, really supportive and helpful and really um, validating in my, in my grief at that time. So it's interesting. Um, maybe point number two and point number three contradict each other, but I guess what I'm saying is you know, when you do tell people, if you do decide to share, um, expect that not everyone will understand, but at the same time, you might be surprised about who actually really shows up for you. The fourth tip is to find ways to remember. Um, so you can recount old stories uh, with the rest of your family about your dog, and that was actually really helpful to me. Um, it was really lovely to kind of like go over like really funny old silly stories about Blue and things about her character and the type of dog that she was. Um, it was lovely to look through old photos and like maybe make an album or print some of those photos. Um, when Blue started to get sicker, uh, one of the things I did was print her paw print, which is here. You can do that with... Uh, acrylic paint just as long as you wash it off really well it's unlikely to be toxic but you should still wash it off really really well um so i always have that and i'm really glad that i did that in time um another thing i did was uh get my nails done so <laughs> my nails are blue and they have been blue since she died because it just I chose a colour and a style that made me, reminded me of her and that sounds really frivolous to some people but if it's comforting to me then that's all that matters and it's the same for you. If it's comforting to you then that is all that matters. It could be saving a piece of their fur in a lockbox or something like that or a piece of jewellery or buying a symbolic piece of jewellery or getting a tattoo or something like that. Um, anything that makes, that keeps them close to you, I think is a really good thing to think about when you're grieving your dog. Following on from that, find a way to express yourself. Um, that was really helpful for me. So in the first four days, as I said, I wrote this video four days after Blue Dive. In the first four days, I couldn't get out of bed really. I kept crying. It was like a very, um, very visceral reaction and the thing that actually managed to get me out of bed was imagining making this video and that sounds so crazy because it's like okay you imagined working and that got you out of bed um but it was just that I could express myself here like I could express how I was feeling um with a community of people who are likely to understand what I was going through and also maybe be able to help other people who are going through this kind of pain so actually writing it out, writing out, you know, my notes and my scribbles and um, kind of organising my thoughts a little bit was a really good way of me expressing myself. Now that obviously that's not for everyone, not everyone has a dog channel, not everyone has a dog blog or anything like that. Um, so maybe your way of expressing yourself is to paint to write, to um, play a musical instrument. It doesn't need to be something creative. It could be like cooking or dancing or something like that. Just something to get 
your emotions out of your body. Um, I'm a huge fan of painting as a way of expressing myself. It doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to, you know, give me something to focus on. That's the other thing, like expressing yourself also gives you something to focus on that is not your grief all of the time. So my sixth point is that every grieving process is unique and I didn't actually understand what this meant uh, until I did a bit more research on this and this is why uh, you should definitely check out the resources down below about grief because it is very interesting if nothing else um, and one of the key takeaways that I got from one of the uh, one of the researchers that I will put on the screen because I forget their name um, was that everyone's relationship with the loved one that's passed uh, is different so that's why your grief is different and that's why your process is different and I I had never understood that until I never understood that until Blue passed away because the way that I reacted to it and the way that my two parents reacted to it and um, other people who knew her reacted um, was different. Uh, my dad was very upset and his reaction, because he, his reaction was more like losing like an adopted child kind of thing, right? Um, he considered Blue a member of the family and it was like losing a baby. To me, Blue was my friend, first and foremost. Oh, don't cry. Mm, no, not wearing uh, waterproof mascara. We're not crying today. But Blue was my friend. And so my grieving process of her will be of losing a friend of mine, a really important, ooh, not crying, <laughs> not crying, mm -mm -mm, not crying, um, was losing a really important friend in my life. So my grief, my grieving process and my dad's grieving process are going to be different because our relationship to Blue was different. And that might be the same in your family. So if you have a family dog that has passed away, um, your children or your parents or your siblings um, or your housemates may all react differently and no, there's no right way, there's no wrong way, your process is all going to be different so don't judge anyone else for the way that they are grieving and don't judge yourself that you are grieving differently to them either. And the seventh tip that I have I actually got from Jackson Galaxy, um, who, if you've never heard of him, is one of the most fascinating humans in the world, and I really admire him a lot, actually. Um, he is the host of a reality TV show called The Cats From Hell, and he's basically a behaviorist for cats. <laughs> um, fascinating, fascinating individual, and he has an excellent video on grieving for your lost pets. <laughs> Um, and he recommends like these three steps to, you know, working through your grief. So step one is describing your loss. And for me, that means kind of naming it. Um, the line that I've been using that has been helping me kind of process is I've lost my friend, you know, um, ah, try not to cry. Oof, this is so hard. Um, I've lost a friend and naming it makes it so much easier to manage somehow. I don't know how, it just does. <laughs> the second step is to write out how your life is different now. So if we join step one and step two, it would be blue, my friend is gone and everything is different now. This is how my life is different and it's good to kind of understand and acknowledge that life is different that you're not really going to go back to the way things were when they were in your life uh, you will start to feel normal again but it's a new type of normal it's not the same normal as before and the th step three is how do you incorporate your loss so how does it fit 
into your life? How are you going to honor your dog? How are you going to honor your dog? How are you going to process? So that could be with like keepsakes and, and things like that. Um, some people adopt another dog, like a puppy or something. Um, and that never replaces the dog that you've lost, but it is a way of incorporating the loss to a degree. Everyone has a different process and I will leave links down below for some excellent uh, resources on this topic. I'm really sorry if this video was very chaotic. It was, I'm sure you understand it was very difficult to make, to actually sit down and talk about this. Um, but you won't be seeing Lou on the channel anymore. And um, it's really, really sad, but she will always be in our hearts, in our minds, and on the channel, those videos will still be there. So she will always be part of Gentle Dog Trainers, which is a really beautiful thing. So I hope this video was helpful for you, even if it was a bit chaotic. Um, I'm sorry for the infrequent uploads, but I am back on schedule now. So we'll be back on track, giving you more excellent videos every single week. But until next time, uh, take care of yourself, uh, take care of your loved ones, be gentle with yourself during this time, um, and I will see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.